Hi, everybody. Welcome to A Mighty Blaze. I'm Jenna Blum, one of the co-founders of The Blaze, and today co-host of Baking with Rach, where we have guest Amy Wallen. Welcome, Amy. Hi. Thanks for having mm -hmm. me. This is fun. We're so excited to have you and to hear how you bake a pie every 30 days and to talk about your book, How to Write a Novel in 30 Pies. I'm so excited. Also, I'm very hungry, so I'm excited for this episode even more than usual. First, I want to welcome everybody to The Blaze. If you are a part of Blaze Nation already, welcome back. Thank you for always bringing your light and keeping The Blaze lit. If you're new to The Blaze, thank you for joining us. We are a team of 35 creative professional volunteers dedicated to linking writers with their readers in the age of COVID and endemic and far beyond. And if you like what you see here, please give us a follow on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on BookTok. We are ubiquitous on YouTube. And please consider signing up for our newsletter, www.mightyblaze.com, so you'll never have literary FOMO ever again. No mo FOMO. Nobody likes that. And today, we have the joy of working with Rach Levy Lesser, who is our baking show host. Hi, Rach. You look so beautiful in your beautiful kitchen. Thank you. You're, I'm at a different angle today. I'm a little stressed because I got to use the stove and the mixer, so you're going to be looking at... The back of me <laughs> yeah. we get rage we get rage butt today we are excited <laughs> for rage butt. I'm like i know you're on the peloton all the time so you work off everything <laughs> you know. yeah. we want to see some like baking twerking so rage in addition to be and being our blaze twerker is the author of life's accessories a memoir and fashion guide her work has appeared in the huffington post glamour parenting modern Mosque, feller and several anthologies she's a graduate of upenn and the university of michigan business school in her previous life as a marketing professional she worked on the business side of time inc on in style people and real simple when not writing rach can be found baking of course and you have a new podcast can you tell us about that please so the podcast came out of the book. It's called Life's Accessories, the podcast. And my podcast partner and I, Stephanie Goldstein, interview interesting, awesome people. And we're going to have some blazers on there. Julie Gerstenblatt's coming on. Rachel Barramount. I want Jenna Blum on there. I got to book you. You got to book me, girl. Yeah, we just had on Jill Cargman from Odd Mom Out. And we asked them about cool accessories from their life and the stories behind them. But it's sort of like my two loves, baking, fashion, got it all going on. So thanks for that shout out. We are so excited. And also your book is out in paperback and it's available. Put the link in the comments. So everybody can buy it from our partner, bookshop.org. Books make PS amazing gifts. And the holidays best. are, as we know, encroaching. Okay. I'm going to okay. sit here and listen and fangirl and ask nosy questions about pie. Enough about Amy. the blaze. Enough about me. Amy. <laughs> okay. Amy, I'm going to read your bio and then we're going to get baking. And as I said before we came on air, Amy is like the poster child for a guest on the show because she writes about baking and writing. Two of our greatest loves. Okay. Best-selling author of a novel and a memoir, Amy Wallen teaches writing workshops in California, France, and anywhere she's invited, usually with pie. She is most recently the author of How to Write a Novel in 20 Pies. I'm going to show you the book. It's a fabulous book. Wow. Um, Sweet and Savory Secrets of Surviving the Writing Life. As a writer in residence of Ocean Discovery Institute, Amy teaches personal storytelling to young people traditionally excluded from science due to race, income status, and educational opportunity. She was associate director of the New York State Summer Writing Institute for seven years and is the founder of Dime Stories, three-minute stories told by the author and featured on NPR. I love that. She's busy with NaNoWriMo, which we're going to talk about. Some of you guys have heard of NaNoWriMo, where you have to write, I think it's like a thousand words a day to write a novel. I've tried that before. Amy is baking a pie every single day during the month of November, which, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine because baking this one pie is like a lot. Um, so she makes 30 pies in 30 days to auction off to raise money for tuition-free programs at Ocean Discovery. So we're going to link to Amy's website because you guys can bid on her pies and you're going to get a pie and you're going to also support an amazing organization. So welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And thanks for telling people about Nano Pimo because it's kind of fun, kind of exciting. And I, ha I was holding my book up because it was helping block the sun. So, <laughs> so it's a little fun here. It's early morning in San Diego, Saturday cartoon time. 
<laughs> Thanks for waking up early with us. We're jealous that you're in San Diego. I'm outside of Philadelphia. Jenna's out in Boston and we're freezing, right, Jenna? It is a bit chilly here today, admittedly. Yes. We need <laughs> pie to keep us warm. Like I would like to just sink my arms and my teeth into a big pie. Right? Yeah, no, it's definitely pie season. It's pie season for sure. Yep. It is pie season. And as Jenna remarked, um, we all got the news alert this morning from the New York Times about how to bake pies. And so we're, you know, in the same brain space, I guess, as the editors of the New York Times. So obviously it's pie season, right? With Thanksgiving. Right? Right. Ooh, there was have... also um, San Diego Union Tribune had a gift, a list of best gift things. And one of them was my book. So it's a great mm -hmm. gift item as well. So pies and gifts, it's that time of year. So congratulations. That's that awesome. So we have a lot of work to do. I'm just going to talk through the steps a little bit. And Amy, can you work with us? And we love your comments online. Jenna can you know, connect us with all of you. But um, I cheated a little bit. I already baked the crust because that's just kind of how I did it. Um, so I told Amy this, I, I made a graham cracker crust because I couldn't find ginger snaps in the store, but that's okay, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, you can use any kind of press in crust. So that's fine. Or a regular dough crust too, but graham cracker works well. I just like the ginger snap and that's what I put in the book. Because I like ginger and lemon. That combo yeah. is just one of my favorite combos. So, um, but, yeah. so I have a question. I'm sorry, Rach, but I wanted to ask about, because of the New York Times article this morning, it was really about people who have pie phobia. And one of the tips actually was bake your crust ahead of time so that you're not freaking out and the crust is going wrong. Do you have more tips about all the pie phobics among us? As far as a uh, crust, well, it's interesting because like they talk about baking your pie or your crust in advance and some crusts don't require that. So it would be depend on the pie, of course. But um, definitely, I think that, you know, it's one of those practice makes perfect kind of situations. And I don't know with pie crusts that, I mean, perfect is not something I think I've achieved yet. <laughs> um, you know, I do kind of do the Paul Hollywood thing when I finish baking a pie and I pull the first piece out and look at the bottom to see if I could tap on it like Paul Hollywood does. Mm -hmm. But, um, and sometimes you can't. Well, there's not much you can do about it after it's pulled out of the ovens and already, you know, cut a slice of it. So you kind of have to just accept some of it. But usually it's about, I mean, some of the best tips for getting that that I have found for getting that like, you know, Paul Hollywood tapping on the bottom kind of crust is put a, um, a sheet pan in the, in the oven while you're preheating it. So the sheet pan is already hot. And, um, and then you put the pie pan on that sheet, um, that sheet pan when you're baking it. And then that gives that a little extra heat on the bottom. So it's not just on the wires of the oven. So that would be one of my favorite tips. Um, That's so smart. That is really the dough is kind of again just kind of a you know hit and miss uh, as far as like practice, but I also think it is really very simple and not to be quite so afraid. And the goal is to not put too much water. So again, mm. it's another one of those when you've gone too far, it's a little too late. But mm. um, but at the same time, just don't you know just do it a tablespoon at a time, not you know half a cup at a time. So. It's mm, funny you mentioned Paul Hollywood because his publicist just, not to name drop, he has a new book out called Bake and the, his publicist just sent me the book. So Paul, if wow. you're watching, come on on um, and we'll, we'll take your tips. Um, but okay, <laughs> that is great. I want to just get moving because I'm sort of like the head <laughs> counselor here. Um, so for those of you who are doing this at home, um, if you make the crust with ginger snaps, it's one and three quarter cups of ginger snaps. And you have to, or graham crackers, you know, however many graham crackers make that amount, which I did this morning. Um, you're going to put them in a food processor until they're sand-like. And you're going to add to that two, ta two tablespoons of granulated sugar and four tablespoons of melted butter. <laughs> Rage of stress. Yeah. And then uh, this is pie stress. So, and then you're going to put that all together in the bottom of the um, pie dish. It worked out beautifully. Um, I tell you, it wasn't as stressful as rolling it out for sure. And then um, you bake it at 350 for seven minutes. So that's the note. Um, we posted the ingredient list. We actually didn't post the instructions because we want you to buy the book. So go buy the book. <laughs> um, that's the crust. 
Um, and then as far as the lemon filling, um, we have four egg yolks beaten with a fork. I'm just gonna list the ingredients here. A cup of granulated sugar, a third a cup of cornstarch, a pinch of salt, one and a half cu cups of warm water, two tablespoons of butter, zest of one large lemon, and half a cup of lemon juice, right? All right, looks good. You're asking me, right? I'm just sitting here salivating. I'm like, yeah, that all sounds really good. So I separated the eggs. This, these are the yolks, four egg yolks. I did a good job, I think. And this is when we're going to go to the stove. And when I go to the stove, I'm going to add um, the all the ingredients to the stove, the water, the, um, the cornstarch, the sugar. And while I do that, Jenna, feel free to take over with the questions. I guess. Thank you. So I wonder, Amy, like for people who do maybe have high stress, like what do you advise about this? I mean, I think... For most amateur bakers, and this is why I'm so excited to hear your pie tips, there it's really hard to get the crust right. And I make a crust that I call, um, it's not as good as your crust or Rachel's crust, but it's called orgasma crust because it's all butter. Like I just use butter instead of lard, which you're never supposed to do probably. And sometimes like 80% of the time it turns out really well. And sometimes I could kill somebody with the pie because it's so heavy. Like the crust just turns out like a rock. So what advice do you have for nervous bakers who love pie, but are like, oh my God, I have stress crust. It's, it's waking me up in the night. <laughs> well, it is important for everything to be chill. That's what my pie guru, Kate McDermott, who's a uh, lemon meringue pie we're actually making today. Um, and she says, it's very important to stay chill. Um, so, uh, you have to keep your hands cold and the, the, everything, your bowl should be cold. I put it in the freezer before I worked in it. Um, your flour, I keep my flour in the freezer. Um, the butter should be very cold, um, when you're using it and not being, having been set out, you know, don't let it sit out on the counter and soften before you use it. Okay. Um, yeah. Rach was telling me a story earlier about how she was working with someone and they were all upset about, she kept putting her, you know, she was working the dough too, too long. You don't want to yeah. work the dough very long. And then also because you don't want the butter to melt when you're working with it, you want it to melt when it bakes. Cause when it bakes, that's when the butter uh, melts and that's what makes all those flaky layers. Um, so that's, that's one thing that's um, again, it's that like, you try it enough times and you start to see that the bigger chunks of butter are what make the difference um, and to be okay with that. I also think pie is forgiving. I mean, I think we, we worry that people are going to notice. The thing I've learned is that people are just so excited to get a, like a piece of chocolate pie or a lemon yeah. meringue pie. Yeah. They're not that paying them unless they're Paul Hollywood or, someone who's a little too finicky to be, you know, your friend, <laughs> um, then they are worried about the crust. But usually that's, that's, I think that's why we should just be happy that they're there and they're sharing a pie with us. I mean, who doesn't want pie, right? I made this terrible pie for some friends who just moved to Boston in September. I forget what kind of, I think it was like an apple, something that I invented. And the crust was so hard that we literally had to hit the pie with a hammer <laughs> like, some, and like a knife chisel right. to make it get out of the pan but i have to say the crust was delicious even though it was a fail it was i was like let's just call this the cookie crust we're just going to pretend right. that this is cookie crust. and my friends of course were like really good tempered about it but it still tasted good somebody makes you a homemade pie like what is not to like there right oh, yeah right no i made it's actually adventures by the book which you know as well jenna and they right. um they did a, an event for me yesterday, and I had made this chocolate pie and a cream cheese crust. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was the same thing. I was cutting it for people, and I'm like, I I'm going to have to go outside and use the, con you know, sit on the concrete with the hatchet to get this thing out. But it actually ended up, like, because the, it was the, the, you know, in the end, it was a beautiful crust. I mean, it was right. actually very flaky. It was also just, you know, I mean, it's part of it I just you know people ate it and had a good time and it was chocolate so nobody cared so. right. right currently have an open flame in the kitchen just so you guys know yay open yay. flame this now is like it's getting exciting in this pot I have the water the sugar the cornstarch a little bit of salt I boiled it I thickened it I'm gonna add about a half of it to the egg yolk mixture right Right, just to so make sure your eggs don't curdle. You might want to do a little stirring while you're doing that. I'm but stirring. I'm putting this back 
And then I'm adding the hot mixture with the eggs back to the stovetop. You see why this is a little complicated here. Oh, yeah. Not only that, but you're trying to talk to us at the same time. We're not just throwing a bunch of berries into a crust here. Right? Right. Level up, Rach. So right. I'm putting this all back into the stovetop. Right. And you you did you did pick one of the more complicated recipes. So there okay. you go. I did. <laughs> I love it though. I love that somebody else is making it and I get to watch. Yeah, I know, right? You get it's like driving all the time and then being in the passenger seat and you're like, let's see how she whips that meringue. Let's exactly. I know, and I'm trying not to be a backseat driver. So no, do <laughs> you're pissed. Just don't yeah. yell at poor Rach, who has been trying. But to don't yell at Rach. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. She's doing everything perfectly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, for those of you watching at home, you might think this is the hardest part. But it's actually not. We haven't even gotten to the egg white meringue part yet. That's a little stressful, too. Yeah. No, actually, all of it's easy. It's just like a lot of steps, I think. You know, like you have to be careful to make sure you follow each step. Like, okay. yeah, I even write in the book about how, I mean, because this is the one about using my learning from my teachers. And I talk about how I had tried to make lemon meringue and I failed because it was just a runny mess. And then when I took a class on lemon meringue pies, I learned that I needed to go an extra minute, even just, you know, really whipping the stuff together. And that made all the difference in making it get thick, you know, and and sometimes you're in a hurry, you know, when you're baking. So um, side note before I do this, I just looked off camera. I warned you guys, my son came home from college last night for Thanksgiving and I sort of forgot that he was here because he hasn't been here in months. <laughs> you guys don't need to see him, but he'll be he'll have a project. I want to see your son with the bedhead. We want to see bedhead boy. No, we come on if you want. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna add to this lemon mi mixture the uh lemon zest, a half of cup of lemon juice. Here's the lemon zest, and two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna pour that into the pie crust, and then we can chill out for a little bit. While I do that, Amy, can you tell us? What inspired you to write a book about novel writing and pie baking and kind of the relationship between the two? Because I think this is fascinating. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, um, for me, uh, the, the way pie and novel writing come together is I was really suffering from, will I ever see the end? You know, will I finish a book? This was my first novel that I was working on and I just didn't feel like I was ever going to finish this thing. And all my friends kept saying, when are you gonna finish that book? <laughs> I, you know, I'm not so sure I called them friends anymore. <laughs> but it became, um, uh, you know, really difficult. Like I was really, um, you know, having a tough time. So I just sort of stepped aside went downstairs and baked a pie. I've always loved chicken pot pie. And I went downstairs and made some pie. And when I finished, I realized I had created something and, you know, I used my creative side and it looked beautiful and it, I got to eat it, which is always a benefit. And I, it was delicious. And I had succeeded and finished something. And it was short, you know, I mean, I think some people take a walk, some people garden, some people write an essay. Um, but I was just that that element of I got to create something and see it finished and eat it. And then I could go back upstairs to my attic office and continue working on the novel. And then I just realized that sometimes if I do that, um, bake a pot, if I do something creative like that, I mean, I also painted a room sometimes and it just made me feel like I finished something. And so I was also standing in front of a class. I taught um, novel writing and, and I was looking out at my students at UCSD and I thought, they want me to tell them the secrets to writing. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, and I, you know, you, your curriculum when you're teaching is often the same thing over and over and over. And so I thought, you know, I should write all of this down and put it in a book. And so the book is me sharing my own anecdotes about the journey of writing. Um, the subtitle is The Sweet and Savory Secrets for Surviving the Writing Life. And it's my own anecdotes of my own story. And then, um, you know, a how-to part is like things I learned as a teacher, you know, give as a teacher. And then it's not really a craft book. There's one chapter on craft, but not really craft. It's more about the writing life. And um, 
And then the third part is recipes, but the recipes, I also include an essay with each recipe about how I came to that recipe and what it means and how it relates to writing life. Um, for instance, like the one about getting in a fight at the farmer's market over apples. So. Oh my God, did you win? Yes. Did you win? I, I won. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it wasn't a physical fight, but it was, okay. uh, it was uh, people were telling me I was buying the wrong apples. And I just, no, I'm not. <laughs> so, um, like, like apples being thrown everywhere. <laughs> I'm very vivid imagining. I mean, Amy, I love this because as a novelist, we just actually had in my own novel workshop, one of the novelists said, guys, as part of my workshop, I'd like to discuss the pages I handed out, but also can you give me some tips on how to finish? Because I've never finished a whole manuscript. And I think so many of us writing long form pieces like that despair because it seems like an endless project. It just takes a really long time for some of us. So it's such a great piece of advice to find yourself a containable task. Like you make a pie, I used to do this with bread. When I was in San Diego doing Adventures by the Book, Mari B. Sullivan and I used to talk about procrastinating, where it's like you get it every day and I was gonna say. it's done, you know? There was right. a big article in the New York Times about procrastinating a few years ago and I felt so seen when that article came out because Jen, as you recall, that's kind of how the show got started during COVID. I mean, we were all kind of having trouble writing and doing our jobs and focusing and doing our creative work. So I just kind of went in the kitchen and started baking and teaching baking classes. And I find even for all the work I do, whether it's writing or podcasting or the show, sometimes I need, I used to call it procrastinate baking, but it's really not because for me, when I get in the kitchen and I'm baking cookies or cakes or whatever, pies, you're kind of, your creative juices kind of get flowing. It's like when you take a walk, Jenna, maybe when you walk the dogs or when you're in the shower, when you're in the car, wherever, like you sometimes get your best ideas there, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, I think. I, I mean, I guess for me, the difference between a walk and baking is interesting because when I'm walking, I come up with that. Like mine is more a bicycle riding. And so when I'm on my bike, I all come up with mm -hmm. an, no idea might pop in my head or I'm going over a scene and I kind of, you know, let things flow a little bit differently. When I'm baking, I'm focusing on the recipe. So it's almost like I've separated myself so that I can let my subconscious, um, you know, catch up with, with, with what it needs to fill out for me. And then I go back to writing and the ideas come. So that totally um, makes sense. I just got another look from Bedhead Guy, but he went back upstairs. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> I wanted to show um, some of the drawings from this book because um, they're really a big part of it. Like, look at this page with uh, about the lemon meringue pie where these awesome women are wearing meringues as hats. It's so fabulous. Oh, yeah, it's a fun one. Can you tell us about your collaboration with your illustrator? Oh, with Emil. Emil Wilson yeah. is the illustrator. Yeah, here, I'll do a little bit. Up close, yes, it's uh he did such a good job of of uh, these fun um, illustrations. Uh, there's over 200 illustrations in the book, and you know it's I, I it's a lot of it's very irreverent. The book is very sardonic. Um, I because I feel like writing is hard, so we need to be a bit funny and sort of realistic. And you know, there's some self-deprecating stuff in this because. It's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, um, or at least it's hard for me. And I, I, so I had a visual, I saw it visually, the book. And so when I first started writing it, we pitched it on proposals. So I'd only done about five chapters. And I uh, reached out to my friend, Emil, who was in a writing group with me. He was in Janet Fitch's writing group with me years ago. And he's also a writer as well as a uh, a creative director in advertising, and but he also is a comic book artist. And so I knew his his illustrations matched my um, sardonic sense of humor. And so I said, would you be interested in doing this? He drew some pictures to go with it. And I was, I loved it. And uh, we pitched it and got a, you know, we got four offers from publishers. I mean, they really loved it. So, so yeah, great. we were really excited. Cool. But it, it, it just, they go together. And, you know, the idea behind this book is I'm telling my story. I'm also giving some advice. Uh, and the idea, it's really about perseverance. Like, keep going. Here's how to keep going. You know, bake a pie now and then. Um, but also just keep, keep, keep going. Keep trying to find an agent. Keep, 
you know, keep looking, waiting for the, you know, keep believing an editor is going to want your book as well. And, and going all the way through publishing. And, um, but I, because it is hard, I wanted the book to be fun. I want it to be yeah. something that people pick up and it ends up with chocolate smears on it, red wine stains, tears. <laughs> I want it to be thick and dog-eared and people to look at it. And like when they're having a hard time, maybe they don't pick a pie. Maybe they pick up this book and find a, a chapter that's their favorite chapter that keeps them going and just read that. And, you know, they don't have to read it from start to finish. They can, you know, go here and there with it and find their favorite parts and just have fun. And that's what the illustrations to me do is they make it fun. They do. Um, I'm going to interrupt you for a sec to get going on the meringue part. Um, okay. So as you guys can see at home, um, this part looks really nice, I think. It's so oh, that looks good, Rach. Oh, Rach so can good. you hold it up again one more time? You know, like try right. yeah. yeah awesome. right. Beautiful. So um the um the meringue part is just a little back story here. I'm sure bakers know these little tricks at home. When I was doing the four egg yolks, I obviously separated the eggs. I held on to the white part of the yolk, or the white part of the egg rather, and I put those in here. We we preserve here, we're not wasteful. And then I added one more egg white because it is um five egg whites in a nice clean bowl. I'm going to put the mixer on. If it gets too loud, you guys keep talking and doing your thing. I think it's going to be okay. But as it gets thicker and fluffier to look like those hats on those women in Amel's drawings, um, I'm going to add to it the mixture of the sugar and the cream of tartar and the vanilla. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep doing that. Okay. So that sounds so delicious. Is that okay? That noise? Yeah, I don't hear it. Do you hear any? I mean, I hear it a little bit. I hear but... it, but not, it's not interruptive. Okay. It's the noise of pie, which right? we love. Um, Amy, can you tell us like a little bit more about um, what happens like when you do get stuck? Like, are you thinking about um, the like the next pie you're going to make? Are you thinking about the next scene? Are you thinking about, or just, are you just kind of letting your hands do the work and letting your brain wander where it wants to go? Yeah, when I'm baking a pie, I am sort of focused on the on the process of pie. So I feel like stepping away completely from the process gives my brain a moment. To, like I said, I think my subconscious somehow picks up on yeah. something else. Yeah. And ideas kind of like pop in. Um, but I I feel like doing something like a walk or or bike riding, hiking um, are places where I I tend to obsess and think about a scene and how can I fix it or if it's a new story idea, what is it going to look like, um, things like that. So they're kind of different. Um, I do feel like there's something about stepping away from it and not thinking about it so that. There, your subconscious can step forward and come up with something later. You know, I kind of like sometimes something will just pop into my head when I'm pie baking, not because I'm thinking about it, but because you know, it's almost like when you go to sleep and then when you wake up, you you know, you remembered, oh, that's what it should be. You know, um, I need to fix the scene by doing this. You know, he comes in the other door instead. <laughs> so right? it seems right. so counterintuitive, but I think sometimes backing out of your work and doing something that has like gentle, repetitive movement is helpful which is why baking is helpful to me when I'm thinking about or like trying not to think about work when I've been like spinning my wheels or like spinning my KitchenAid mixer in my brain for so long that I've overdone everything tell us about like your favorite favorite pie what's your favorite pie to make oh my favorite pie you know I actually I started baking pies by doing savory pies and um, yeah, and so chicken pot pie, of course, is the standard. But my very favorite is salmon and portobello pie um, that I just, I did just a very satisfying. I love salmon um, and I love mushrooms. And, uh, and then I suppose my favorite uh, sweet pie is, uh, in the book, it's called Brother and Sister Pie. And it's a book that, I mean, it's a pie that um, it was a great aunt's recipe that we used to call sister's pie. And then my brother and I revamped it by making a little better custard than what was the old recipe. And uh, I changed it to a graham cracker crust, kind of like Rachel had done today. Yeah. Yep. And then um, 
I added a lot more, uh, like better chocolate to it than my grandmother had used and things like that. So, or my great aunt rather. Um, and that's probably one of my favorite sweet pie, but yeah. So. That sounds delicious. I am a big fan of the graham cracker crust, but the only problem is when I'm making it, I actually eat most of it. And then the crust is very small because most yeah. of it is like in the belly. Yeah, I, I make a little extra. <laughs> my, my, um, I was staying with some friends in Florida this year and um, for free in their cottage. And I repaid them by making a crumble every few days, like a, a cobbler. And I would make an extra cup of the crumbler top and then just set it in front of my friend while she was working on her laptop. Yeah. Also, they could, Tell me about like your preference for like crust versus high crust versus crumble top. This is like a big in the yeah. pie world, right? You know, I eat the, the crumble where you do like oatmeal and brown sugar and the butter, all of that. I really, like if I'm making an apple pie, unless somebody specifically asks for that top crust, I make it Dutch apple with that crumble on top. But so I'm I'm going to be baking with, for Nano Pime, I'm going to be baking with Tammy Greenwood, um, who's another author and, and San Diego author. And she, um, and she's uh, from Vermont originally, and some of her books take place up there as well. Anyway, she wants to bake an apple and cheddar pie. And that's a, it's a cheddar cheese crust. And so that's actually going to be, so that's very different than the other. And I think that one also sounds really good. I've made a cheddar cheese crust before and they are delicious. So, so there's times when the two crust pie works, but the crumble is definitely my, my go-to. I just, I think it's because I can eat it while I'm baking. And oh, not, yeah. I don't so right like, just crust. to make sure it's okay, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. I have to test everything to make sure it's not poisonous, well, but I have to test a lot. Speaking of that, I kind of want to try the um, this meringue topping because it really, I mean, it's just egg white, sugar, cream of tartar. It's so good, right? Is that dangerous because of the egg white? Can you get salmonella from that? Rage. <laughs> I mean, this is basically, I make a lot of meringues. This is kind of, you throw in some chocolate chips here. That's meringues, right? Okay. I mean, yeah. sure. Well, I'm going to put this on top. Sorry about that noise. I felt like an airplane just took off in my house. I hope it was okay. <laughs> Um, I have a question because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the meringue topping on top. I'm going to try to make it look like those pretty foam hats in, <laughs> in Amos drawings. And then I'm just going to bake it at 375, I think. For how long am I going to do that? Just like six um, or seven minutes, I think. Six or seven minutes. Not much. There's not that much baking time really in this pie. You just do the crust for seven minutes and this for, for a few minutes. But um, if I make this today and if you guys are coming, any of my family members watching coming to my house for Thanksgiving – Ignore this part. Um, could I still serve this on Thanksgiving? Could I store it in the fridge or wouldn't it will not last that long? I don't think it would last that long. And the, the meringue, I think, is um, a little, I think that's the part. I think the part that's the custard would be better. I mean, the egg, the, the part that I worry about is the egg. It's okay. sort of like uh, Jenna was saying. I think you're, 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 unless you don't like your family and you want everybody to have seven. No, I love my family. Okay, you know what I'm going to do for Thanksgiving? For those of you who followed me before, I'm going to make my chocolate chip bunt cake, which is a version of Linda Loigman's Tilly cake. Oh, so um, good. Oh, my God. So good. So, yeah. I want to try to do my little side note here. I want to try to do my Thanksgiving baking this weekend ahead of time so that I could do the cooking later in the week. So, great. That is I'm going to make a German chocolate pie. It was actually a Food 52 recipe I tried the other day, and it was delicious. If you like German chocolate cake, it's okay. a really good morning. Welcome to yeah. Blaze. That sounds delightful. I want to know what and what kind of pies are you going to make for, for Thanksgiving in addition to that, Amy? Are you just making the one, or are you going to make uh, – No, I'm going to be making a pumpkin pie, and then I like the, – there's a bourbon pumpkin pie that oh I God. like to make. Doesn't that sound good? Yeah. Um, and then a chocolate pecan, which is that German mm. chocolate, but I also – there's a um, – there's so many different kinds of chocolate pecan, pecan chocolate, you know, and then um, – um, I'm also going to be making a savory pie that I actually do the day after Thanksgiving where I take all the leftovers and I put them in a whole wheat crust. So you that mean like so smart stuffing and all that stuff. Well, the stuffing I put as the topping. So sort of like a shepherd's pie. I use this and then it gets crispy when you bake it. You have to like bake it for about 40 minutes. 
And uh, but I put the green bean casserole in there, the leftover turkey, the gravy, those you know honeyed carrots, the squash that's you know spicy. I put all those layers in there together, and uh, it bakes up really, really delicious. So. Hey, that's so smart. Do you have the whole wheat crust recipe in your book so that we can do that? Um, I, I, actually, it's super easy. You just take the basic recipe for pie crust, and it's a two and a half cups of flour in that one. So instead of two and a half cups, you do two and a quarter cups of regular flour, and then a quarter cup of whole wheat flour. So you're just okay. switching out a quarter cup of whole wheat flour. You don't want to do all whole wheat or it'll be too hard. So. When you're doing the cheddar crust, do you just put cheddar cheese in that as well? And then it just becomes magically like a cheddar cheese whole wheat crust, also very healthy. Right. It is. It's, I'm just substituting out part of the fat. So instead of the, um, you know, uh, 16 tablespoons of butter, you do eight tablespoons of butter and um, and then like a cup of, of cheese. So oh, it's all with butter? What's and that? That's all with the butter? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you how much butter I'm using this week to bake and cook for things. Oh, I know. Oh, you should see how much butter I bought for Nano Pimo. It was like, you know, yards of rows of butter. Um, for Nano Pimo, and we could also take some audience questions too. Um, so you're in the thick of that now. Um, how long have you been doing it for? Like how many years? And tell us about the, um, the nonprofit that the proceeds go to. Sure. This is the fourth year I've done it. Um, it's only the second year I've done it for, um, for a nonprofit for auctioning off the pies to raise money for Ocean Discovery Institute. And it's an organization I work for here in San Diego. It's an after school program. It's actually a STEM program, but I teach storytelling to the kids. Um, kindergarten through 12th grade. And we, uh, you know, they all, that's an inner city program. And um, we work with them on everything from climate change to dissecting squid. And then I work with them on writing their personal stories about their, their life outside of the classroom and they're writing, working with their community, but also their experiences um, getting exposed to science and the ocean and believe, you know, it's kind of one of those situations where they, even though they live in San Diego, they may not have ever been to the ocean, even though we're just like five miles away. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, yeah, I raised money by baking a pie a day and auctioning it off. Last year, uh, I, I raised, I started it as a kind of a, you know, like NaNoWriMo. I thought on October 31st, that four years ago, I thought, oh, I'm going to bake a pie a day just for a kind of gimmick, a goof. A challenge. I like to do personal challenges, like you know, oh, I'm going to climb all the mountaintops in San Diego. You know, I mean, just one of those kind of kind of challenges. You like that. I'm making Ina dinners almost every night this year. Yeah, and yeah. that's the thing is, I I did it like that way, but then everybody liked the pie, and I was like, what am I going to do with all these pies? So I started auctioning them off, and I've raised last year. I raised four thousand dollars. This year, I'm already at uh, 4,500, and it's only halfway through. Oh, so, my gosh. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you on the pies. And then you, you ship, do you ship the pies to wherever? Like, how does that work? If they're, if they're local, they can come pick up the pie. But if they're out of town, I give the pie to the kids. I take oh, the pie over to Ocean Discovery Institute, and they get a pie. And, of course, the kids love pie. They see me, and they're like, it's today pie day. That's amazing. <laughs> so, you know what? Maybe at the Blaze, we should do some nano cookie mo auction <laughs> yeah you and i mean you need to be with gold belly right rach so you can start the amount so of baking that happens in my kitchen is ridiculous yeah mm -hmm. yeah um, i need to figure out how to ship that's definitely something i need to figure out yeah that's hard no let me know let me know how it does how we do that we sort of sort of started a little thing at the blaze um, if I could brag about the cool people at the blaze where Jenna or I will ship some cookies or whatever via tins and the tins are kind of going back and forth to people who might, you know, just to say thanks or hello or hope you're feeling okay kind of stuff. So baked goods always make good gifts. So do books, obviously the holidays coming up. So just everybody remember that. So, um, can you, you started in the beginning to tell us about, um, how this book came out of like getting frustrated about writing your first novel. What was the name of your first novel? Moon pies and movie stars, more, more pies, <laughs> different kind of pie, but moon pies and movie stars was the name of that book. And it was uh, about a woman who uh, spots her runaway daughter on a Buttermaid commercial. So she sets off for Hollywood. She's from Texas and she sets off for Hollywood to find her. And it's their, it's a journey story about her and her sister crossing the country in a Winnebago. That's and, amazing. 
yeah, it's fun. It's a fun story. And what a great title. Right? More pies. Oh, I got a lot of moon pies at my book tour. So. so tell us about what you're doing on your book tour now. Yes. Well, like, it's funny because, of course, this has so many recipes. I do a lot of baking events. Um, and uh, yesterday I did a two pie adventure with, again, um, um, Adventures by the Book. And I did a writing retreat with them uh, back in October. And we... Uh, got together. I like I like doing writing retreats, and we do uh, writing exercises, generative work, but we also do some read and critique. And then um, I bake pies for people, and I do a little pie demonstration on pie crust and and tips on that as well. But we were in a mountain cottage up in Aspendale, California. The aspens were turning, and it was just a wonderful four days. Um, and then I'm also doing. Um, um, also some speaking about writing, uh, in tips. I just spoke at a library recently in San Marcos and things like that. A lot, lot of stuff, but like workshops, people uh, learning to write. Um, but also just about perseverance is that's what the book mm -hmm. is also about is just how to keep going no matter what you're doing, whether you want to, you know, own a cat store, I'm happy to help you persevere through that as well. For those who want to own a cat store. Right, right. Yeah, right. Long people, right, Jenna? Yes. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to ask you. Like, I know Adventures by the Book very, very well because I did an adventure in Germany to take readers into the setting of my first novel, Those Who Save Us with Adventures, which was phenomenal. But Amy, do you want to tell our audience a little bit more about Adventures by the Book? Because I think people should investigate this now that the world has opened up a little bit. Right. Yes. No. Adventures by the Book is fabulous. Um, they do all kinds of trips. Um, they also do. I mean, they do a lot of local stuff too, and they're expanding into other other cities. Uh, but they are great at creating um, multi sensory, multi sensorial experiences. I just heard of Susan explain it that way yesterday. Um, experiences with authors. So instead of just going to a bookstore and seeing a author read from their book. Uh, you actually get to experience something from their book or from their stories or from their lives with the author. And it's a great way to like get to know an author, get to know about their life. Like she also did an in the author studio event here at my house. And there were all the people were actually right here in my in my studio. Um, we also were out on my deck and I made apple pie on the grill, which I burned. Oh my God. How do you do so, that? Wait a yeah, minute. No, you, just make it in a skillet. you just make it in a skillet. And then, but I was busy talking and I didn't check it, <laughs> but that's okay. I had another pie for us to eat as well. I did some mushroom pies for us that I did in the oven instead, but, um, but they came here and enjoyed, you know, they got to spend a day at my house and but then we do everything from go to Germany or Aspendel, California. She went to Morocco. Um, you know, they've got a lot of, you could check out their website. They have so many different events. They do uh, the changing of the leaves, uh, you know, in Vermont trip, um, things like that. So big, small, they do a lot of stuff online now, you know, COVID moved a lot of us that way. And they do uh, some, something called super, super book, which is kind of like the super bowl and set up so that, you get to be with a lot of different authors and they, um, you, she has a kind of a game thing that she does with it. Um, book bingo, um, things like that. So she got all, she's very creative. In fact, yesterday we talked about like how I could do Nano NaNoWriMo uh, next year with a whole different perspective with where other bakers come in. Rachel, maybe you want to be part of it. I want to come. We actually get other bakers to raise money so that we're all doing it. So like a lot of people, you want to do it too, Jenna? Yeah. I, I definitely do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would be a fun thing to just get lots of, it'd be one day event and we're all baking and we're just raising money. Can you come to pie. California? Yes. Yeah. We're I think it'd be fun. And that was Susan McBath's idea from Adventures by the Book. So Let's I do think, that. That'd be yeah, so right. fun. I could do my cookies. Oh, definitely. Yes. It would be cool. Yeah. Just, yeah, I cool. will do like German bread because that's in my book. Susan McBath, who founded Adventures by the Book, is like a pinwheel of a person and she's always throwing off sparks yeah. of ideas. Yes. It's so fantastic. Um, and I, I will come and say it's Susan's house. And she has a hot tub, so we can all be like bakers in a oh, hot tub. It's right. casting from there. So great. Let's have a nice pool. Right? You guys, here's the um, pie. I need a lot of reassurance here from the expert. Is that is it brown oh. enough, do you think? 
It looks awesome. I, I can't see it that well, but it looks really beautiful from this yeah. angle. So yeah. I put it in the oven at 375 for eight minutes. So, and it's I think that's beautiful. what the trick. You can do, you know, you can also take one of those little blow torchy things and make it a little browner if you want it a little browner. Um, I actually have one of those blow torchy things because during COVID, my daughter and I were making like creme brulees and crazy stuff. You know, we were just ordering stuff online and, you know, whatever. Do I? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. This has been so much fun. I feel like we could talk to you forever, but um, I guess we need to let you go and promote your book and bake another pie. Are you going to bake a pie today? I am. Um, I was going to, I'm, I'm auctioning it off and I was going to do the lemon meringue since that's what you did today. And then I don't know, I just have that craving for that German chocolate. Which one should I do? Should I do the German chocolate one again? And because this is an auction, which one do you think people will pay more for? Both. Um, Probably I can do one today. I still have tomorrow. I have well, another ten I'm days. I'm excited about lemon, and I actually know I'm gonna I'm gonna give this to my family this weekend. They're gonna be excited. But I'm more of like a lemon vanilla person. But I think people will like the chocolate better. I think I'll try selling the chocolate today, and then I might do lemon meringue tomorrow. It's lemon season here in San Diego. It's citrus season, right. so I got lots of lemon juice. I have a lemon tree out back, so oh, so jealous. Well, so jealous. speaking of chocolate, before we say goodbye, I just want to promote and that's why i was looking at my phone you guys by the way to find the name and i was don't worry i wasn't like emailing with friends just a second ago <laughs> um, so um Checking on Twitter Twitter account. Account, which is going to be our holiday baking show we're having on rose levy barenbaum no relation to rachel levy lesser but um she wrote this book and this is my kind of bible it's called the cookie bible okay and it is awesome and we're gonna make these chocolate ganache cookies which are perfect for the holidays. And I'm really excited to have her on. So that's going to be on December 17th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So mark your calendars. That's what's coming up next. Um, but Amy, it was such a pleasure talking to you. We loved it. And I love your book. And it makes a great gift. So definitely everybody go to Bookshop and check it out. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This was great fun. And thank yes. you, Gina, for being co-host extraordinaire and producer. And po you, you guys don't know this at home, but Jenna is just doing 500 things at once to make sure the show goes smoothly. And she looks good while doing it. <laughs> Hardly, but thank you. And I wish that, Rich, I think it's very selfish of you to have made lemon meringue pie because you can't send it to me. And I really want some. <laughs> I know. I know. Right? I know. I want some, too. I wish we could auction that one off. I know. It's good. It's beautiful. It also looks extra big. So I'm, I think it's like a giant. It does. You know what? I used a big pie dish because I wasn't stressed out about rolling out the pie crust to fit it and having holes in it. So I used my biggest pie dish. Amazing. I can't believe that it's almost time to go already. Like I, this flew by. I thought we were only 15 minutes in. Amy, thank you so much for joining us and please raise tons of money for the Ocean Institute with your auctions. We would love having you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for everything, you guys. It was fun. I enjoyed this. Super fun. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Ray. We'll see you next time on The Baking Show. December 17th, y'all. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>